TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. U.S. CENTCOM Commander General Kenneth McKenzie stresses that Iran continues to pose the greatest threat to U.S. interests and its partners in the Middle East. China rejects Western claims that it is vying for geopolitical gains or intends to fill a power vacuum in the Middle East. The Ayatollah regime in Tehran continues to insist on two outstanding demands which it regards as prerequisites for the revival of the 2015 nuclear agreement. The Islamic Republic of Iran continues to pose the greatest threat to U.S. interests in the Middle East and the security of the region as a whole. Testifying to a hearing of the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee for the last time as commander of U.S. forces in the Middle East, outgoing CENTCOM commander General Kenneth McKenzie provided a declassified overview of his area of responsibility, or AOR, including the core goals which he was tasked with. CENTCOM was established nearly 40 years ago to counter the malign influence of a revolutionary regime that had seized power in Tehran and to compete with a great power that had, in spite of international condemnation, invaded the sovereign state of Afghanistan and imposed a puppet regime. Today, Iran is no less of a threat to American interests or to the stability of the region than it was in 1979. To the contrary, the threat posed by Iran is graver than ever. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, moreover, has violently demonstrated its willful regard for international norms. Just as we have seen through Russia's actions in Syria and elsewhere, in fact, anywhere it sees an opportunity to diminish confidence in America's leadership. In a more measured fashion, China is also vying for increased influence at American expense in a region it depends upon for over 40 percent of its fossil fuels. In his opening remarks to the committee's hearing, which lasted for roughly two hours and 15 minutes, General McKenzie also stressed that the gravest threat posed to the U.S. and its regional partners, including Israel, persistently emanates from the Islamic Republic of Iran. I'd like to specifically address our posture in the Middle East. Here, Iran continues to pose the greatest threat to U.S. interests and the security of the region as a whole. Through its proxies and clients, Iran has fomented conflict in an arc tracing from Yemen through the Arabian Peninsula across Iraq and Syria into Lebanon and to the very borders of Israel. Saudi Arabia endures regular attacks on the Houthis, who wield some of the most advanced unmanned aerial systems and cruise missiles in the region, courtesy of the Iranians. Recently, the Houthis expanded these attacks to include urban centers and bases with U.S. forces in the United Arab Emirates. Tehran also enables its aligned militias in Iraq and Syria to carry on a persistent, low-level campaign of indirect fire and unmanned aerial system attacks against U.S. and coalition forces, hoping to drive us from the region. Of late, this campaign has been relatively restrained, but Iran only loosely controls the militias that conduct these attacks, and as recently as 2020, Iran demonstrated its willingness to target U.S. forces directly with its highly capable ballistic missile forces. Iran's ballistic missile forces con- constitute an exigent threat to the security of every state in the region, among them our most important and enduring partners. They continue to look to the United States for assurance that we, the historic partner of choice in the region, will remain a reliable one. During the hearing's Q&A session, General McKenzie was asked on multiple occasions about the Iranian threat and the degree of attacks directed at U.S. and partner forces in the region. Iran is a... Uh, foments a particularly virulent form of anti-Americanism across the, across the theater. It is a long-term objective of Iran for the United States to be forced to exit the region. Mm-hmm. They see the principal battleground for that as being Iraq, because that's where we're the most distributed, that's where we're the most vulnerable. And for the last couple of years, they've actually tried to pursue a political solution to that. That has not worked out for them. The seating, the seated government of Iraq is interested in maintaining a long-term relationship with the United States and, in fact, with NATO. And what, th- what's that done, what that has done is it has driven Iran and its proxies, its proxies in particular, to seek kinetic solutions to push us out. They believe that by causing a significantly high level of pain, we're going to leave. Mm-hmm. And that actually, of course, has not proven to be the case. For one thing, over the past several months, they have attacked us. Mm-hmm. They have not been particularly successful with those attacks. 
Once a watered-down nuclear deal with the Ayatollah regime is revived, billions of dollars are expected to pour into Tehran's treasury. Therefore, Democrat Senator Angus King sought to gain the U.S. military's perspective about what may constitute a graver danger posed by the Islamic Republic of Iran. Do you view the, a nuclear Iran as more dangerous than an Iran with more money in their pockets? Well, Senator, as you know, CENTCOM is the land of less than perfect solutions. So I'm always comfortable with a less, less than perfect solution. It is a, an overriding national policy of the objective of the United States for Iran to not have a nuclear weapon and be able to possess a nuclear weapon. So I think that's a very important goal, and you might have to make some trade-offs to get to that point. But as, as at the military level, my concern is, first of all, that they not have that nuclear weapon, but I am also very concerned about the remarkable growth in number and efficiency of their ballistic missile force their UAV program, their long-range drones, and their land attack cruise missile program. Yeah, that was All of those concern me. Alongside Iran's malign behavior throughout the greater Middle East, General McKenzie was also asked about China's growing activities into the region. Senator, I'll begin with uh, their economic penetration into the region. They draw a significant portion of their hydrocarbons from the region. A lot of it goes to the Strait of Hormuz. We see as a result of that, they are interested in pursuing close, deep, and economic relationships with nations that adjoin the Strait of Hormuz and the, and the Gulf itself so that they can protect that long-term investment. I believe ultimately that will move from economic to a military, to a military um, component. It is important to know that last week during a press conference in Beijing, on the sidelines of the fifth session of the 13th National People's Congress, Chinese counselor and foreign minister Wang Yi outlined his country's public policy for the Middle East. Tongshi Beijing's top diplomat further rejected Western claims that China was vying for geopolitical gains or intended to fill a power vacuum that emerged in the region following the U.S. disengagement from Afghanistan and elsewhere. China Chi 以自強、謀穩定、以合作、謀發展,真正實現中東地區的長久和平與繁榮,謝謝。As a forum mentioned, one of China's key partners in the region is the Islamic Republic of Iran. And while Tehran remains under a crippling sanctions regime, Beijing and Moscow, alongside Berlin, Paris, London and Washington, are seeking to revive a watered-down version of the 2015 nuclear agreement, which declaratively aims to limit Iran's nuclear ambitions in return for sanctions relief. However, two outstanding issues remain, including Iranian demands for U.S. guarantees that financial benefits from a revived deal would endure if a future American administration decides to once again scrap the flawed agreement alongside another non-nuclear demand that the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps be removed from Washington's designated list of foreign terror organizations. ما چهار موضوع رو به عنوان خط قرمز خودمون در مذاکرات نزدیک به نهایی خودمون پیش رو داشتیم از این چهار موضوع در سه هفته گذشته 
دو موضوع تقریبا حل شده و به نقطه توافق رسیدیم اما دو موضوع همچنان باقی مانده از جمله موضوع تضمین اقتصادی The Iranian foreign minister who spoke at an event of Tehran's diplomatic club further stressed that it was up to the Biden administration to resolve the final outstanding issues. اگر طرف آمریکایی اراده لازم رو برای حل و فصل دو موضوع باقی مانده داشته باشه ما آماده هستیم که در اولین فرصت با حضور وزرا در وین روز جنبندی و تصمیم نهایی رو داشته باشیم و به نقطه پایانی توافق برسیم. It is important to highlight that during the Senate hearing of General Kenneth McKenzie, the CENTCOM commander stressed that from his perspective, the RGC constitutes a terror organization. General McKenzie told the uh, Armed Services Committee that from everything that he can see, uh, the IRGC is a, a terrorist organization. Is the White House willing to delist the IRGC from the foreign terrorist organization list in order to get a deal with Iran? We're still in the negotiations, so I'm not going to speculate or outline from here what the final details look like. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's Daily Prayer Initiative, I would like to encourage you today to once again pray for Australia, including all those who are affected by a flood crisis in the continent, alongside unceasing prayer for the situation revolving Russia and Ukraine, prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.